This is the examination of the lymph nodes. To do the examination of the lymph nodes, we need to do two examination techniques, which is inspection, where we visualize with a purpose using our senses, and then palpation, where we um, palpate using the sense of touch. So first we're going to look at all the lymph nodes of the head and neck, the sites. We're going to look at the sites to see if there's if, uh, look at the shape. We're going to look at the location of, this, of the lymph nodes, the shape, the mobility of the lymph nodes, and if there's any tenderness or pain or swelling. So we're going to first look at the occipital lymph node, which is at the base of the skull or the occiput within the hairline, to see if there's any abnormalities. Then we're going to look at the post-auricular lymph node, which is situated behind the ear over the mastoid process. And then we're going to look at the um, pre-auricular lymph node, which is situated at the, in front of the tragus of the ear. Then we go down to the tonsillar lymph node, which is at the angle of the jaw. And then we go from ang and the, the angle of the jaw or the mandible to the symphysis of the mandible midline we're going to look at the submandibular lymph node which is situated there and then we're going to look and see if there's any abnormalities at the submental lymph node which is situated at the behind the symphysis of the jaw right now we go to the posterior cervical um, lymph nodes which is um, along the anterior edge of the, of the trapezius along the anterior edge of the trapezius. Then we look and we go to the superficial lymph node, which is overlying the sternocleidomastoid uh, muscle. And then we go to the supraclavicular lymph nodes, which is situated at the angle formed by the sternocleidomastoid and the clavicle. The angle formed by the sternocleidomastoid and the clavicle. So we palpate there or we look Sorry, we look there to see if there's any abnormalities, any swelling, any um, discoloration, any inflammation, uh, and then we continue with the palpation. Now with the palpation, we make use of the sense of touch, so we're going to palpate, and we do that in a circular movement. Okay, we palpate to feel if there's tenderness and swelling. Then we look at the submental uh, lymph node, which is situated behind the symphysis of the jaw. Then we go to the posterior cervical lymph nodes which is situated along the anterior edge of the trapezius and then we also look over the sternocleidomastoid muscle uh, um, um, to, for the superficial cervical lymph nodes which is uh, situated over the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Then from there we go to the uh, supraclavicular lymph nodes which is in the angle formed by the sternocleidomastoid and the clavicle. The angle formed by the sternocleidomastoid and the clavicle. You look for any swelling, inflammation, anything that's abnormal. Remember, we must look both sides. We also look at the at the at the thyroid gland, the area where the thyroid gland is situated. We look if there's any swelling or any um, um, abnormalities. We also look because we must. You must remember, we must still look at the deep cervical lymph nodes, which is situated deep within the sternocleidomastoid. So we we'll also look if there's any abnormalities there. And then we can start with a palpation of the lymph nodes. When we do the palpation, we start at occipital. As we said, it's at the base of the skull within the hairline. So we palpate. With palpation, we feel if there's any tenderness and swelling. Then we go to the post-auricular lymph node over the mastoid process and we palpate over the mastoid process for any pain and tenderness and enlargement. In front of the tragus for the preauricular lymph node, palpate. Palpate means we must move the skin. Then we go down to the tonsillar lymph node and we palpate to feel if, this, if it is enlarged. Because if it's enlarged, we know there's an infection, like tonsillitis. Then we palpate the submandibular lymph node between the angle of the jaw and the symphysis of the jaw. And then the submental lymph node at the symphysis of the jaw. Right. Then we go to the post cervical lymph nodes, which is along the anterior edge of the trapezius, and we palpate. And then the superficial cervical lymph nodes overlying the sternocleidomastoid muscle, and we palpate. 
And in the supraclavicular lymph nodes, we palpate in the angle formed by the sternocleidomastoid and the clavicle. Then we go to at the back of the patient and uh, we palpate for the deep cervical lymph nodes. You put your thumbs <coughs> on the patient's back like that so that you don't in the process go and choke the patient. So we put our fingers deep within the sternocleidomastoid and we palpate for the deep cervical lymph nodes. Okay, and in the same process we feel for the thyroid gland, even though it's not a lymph node, it's a gland situation on the, uh, on the cricoid cartilage. You put your fingers on the cricoid cartilage and alongside the trachea and ask your patient to swallow. Swallow please, patient. And if they swallow, you can feel if there is an enlargement going up and down. That will indicate that the thyroid is enlarged. But if there's nothing, you just feel the trachea going up and down, then you know there's no enlargement. Oh, if the lymph nodes is enlarged, for example, by the tonsillus, uh, tonsillar lymph node, then we know that's an indication of tonsillitis. If the occipital lymph node is enlarged, that is an indication that there's an infection, for example, in petigo, which is an infection of the skin, of the scalp. And also, if there is an enlargement of the post auricular lymph node, it could be an indication of otitis media or mastoiditis. And a, a submandibular lymph node, if that is enlarged, it could be an indication of um, mouth floor infections, herpes stomatitis, and posterior cervical lymph node, if, they, if it is enlarged, it could be an indication of systemic illness.